Hey, Dave from Nerdarchy, four nerds by nerds, hanging out with Nerdarchist Ted. And we're going to give you three tips to running D&D for large adventuring parties. We're going to start this video by thanking our sponsor, Easy Roller Dice. Whether it's your first set of dice or your one millionth set of dice, Easy Roller Dice. Down in the description, you can find a link, easyrollerdice.com slash nerdarchy, as well as a one-time promo code for a whopping 20% off. Go get some Easy Roller Dice. Speaking of, you know, large amounts of dice, you know what needs that? Large amounts of players. So that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about running for large groups. Yeah, we, we had a request to do this video. The GM has a limited amount of time and a large group and wants to maximize it. So we're going to come up, we're going to come up with some things. So we got like three, three tips or three ways to get your game running a little bit faster with a large group. Now, in order to really get into that, you kind of have to look at what are the things that not everybody realizes when you're dealing with, with large groups? So let's, let's get into it and diagnose that. And I think the first thing is you're just not going to get as much done. You're going to have more threats. The combat is just going to take longer because it, it, it sucks if, if combat every single time, the person who rolls crappy or has that low deck score, they never get a turn in combat because, well... Combat's just, you know, run through your nine players that go before him, tank it all. It's like, well, why am I even here? Yeah, I mean, that that's going to be an issue. More combat is going to be required. Not so much more combat, more challenging combats, which are going to take longer. More adversaries or a bigger adversary. There's going to be times where because there is just so much, so much more of a threat, players are going to drop more. So you're, you're going to have that, that flow of, well... Just, just face it. You need to have more, more healers or more ways to bring people up or stabilize. It's, it's just part of the nature of combats or and groups that big. Well, even just from like kind of a logistics standpoint, if you think about it, if you're not even just like nine people at the table, if if each person rolls role plays in a scene for ten minutes. Right, and not all at once, even just mm. in general, ten minutes. That's an hour and a half. That's ninety minutes. Also, it's not unheard of for a combat to run ninety minutes. Absolutely, especially with a large group. That's three hours. <laughs> Te everyone so. role plays for ten minutes, and we do one combat three hours. That's you know that's a, basically a session. Uh, if you're at gaming at a gaming store where you only have a two hour block. You're you're gonna make that then even even smaller of an impact on your overall story because you're dealing with that now. Back in the day, uh, you know the infantile stages of what Nerdarchy is now. We we had games that were up to fourteen players. The game that I I am running now has fluctuated over time. And has been up to as many as nine players. As few as three, <laughs> as many as nine. <laughs> so, like, you know, it, it's it's gone through this this you know big curve. But like, we're we're rock solid at you know six seven players now. So it, it's it's interesting. But even that is still larger than the average dynamic that you see out there of you know four and five. So let's get into it. like so. What are some ways that we can help? people you know speed up their game so we you know we've got three things three ways on our list uh you know one of them is time savers another one is you know controlling the flow of the game and then a, a third one is delegation all right so if we get into time savers you know for average games a lot of these things they might expedite the, the, the process, they might make your combats go that little bit faster, and those fractions of a second might not mean a lot. But when you're running for large parties, if everybody is shaving off, you know, 30 seconds you know, to a minute off their turn, that can, that can make an, out, an astounding, you know, reduction in the, the process. So rolling your attack and damage at the same time or pre pre rolling so okay while he's going i'm going to figure out what i'm what i'm doing and i and i do it okay i i hit ac 17 16 13 for this damage this damage this damage you know let me know what happens it expedites all of it as opposed to everybody sitting there waiting now it, it's an issue of well you know is your dice rolling distracting distracting is what he's going to do going to influence your turn like all of these things are going to come into it but most of the time you can you can do this this step and it's going to make things go that much faster 
Right, even if it's a little bit. Another thing is just have your players know what they're going to do in their turn. Yes, occasionally it's going to come up where something changes and they have to change what they're doing. You know, maybe even it wouldn't be too far fetched to ask them, hey, come up with two or three things you're going to do in your next turn. So this way you can just do it and go, you know, try and know what your characters do. I mean, new players, there's a learning curve. So you have that. But, you know, but still to, is to the best of everyone's ability, if they can keep things moving, you know, through throughout the game, that's just going to help a lot. Every character in a game, especially like this one, should have a default. Oh, I'm a melee character. I, I move to the closest enemy, make a melee attack. Oh, I'm a ranged, ranged attacker. I make a ranged attack. I'm a spellcaster. I'll default to my, my, my best damage dealing cantrip. And it could be, oh, your cleric is going to sacred flame. Your wizard could do firebolt. You know, all, all of these kind of things. Every character should have that. This is my default. And if it comes to you and you don't know what you're doing, boom, you do your default. You move on to the next person. Having something as simple as that alleviates the, well, I don't know what I'm going to do this turn. And it will it will greatly speed up what's going on. Right. It, you know, even if, if only for one round, everybody takes an extra minute to take their turn, well, you've just lost nine minutes. You know, you've just added nine minutes to the game with, with that size of group. And it can be even worse than that. Mm -hmm. You know, another time saver we find is staying in character. If everything you do is only in the game and in character, it keeps the game moving faster and you're going to get more stuff done. Now, it's really easy to want to like have side chatter and go off and eat some pizza or do some other things. But if you can stay in character for the whole time you're gaming, it's, go it's just going to expedite things. One of the things we actually do in our own group is we set aside time before this session starts in order to, you know, in order to like let people get out, get it out of their system and talk and hang out a little bit. Like I intentionally delay the start of all of my games for that reason, but especially because I have players that tend to be really antsy at times. So I'm like, well, let me get, let them get their stuff out a little bit. At least it doesn't alleviate everything, but it does help. If you can get that chatter taken care of, you know, before or even after, it, it it really helps out. And if people know, okay, well, we can we can get to the what happened in your week, you know, before the game or after the game, and that's a typical typical thing, then you won't have to worry about those issues. Now, you know, Dave says you want to alleviate those outbursts, those out of character moments, because it's very easy to oh this you know person A says this out of game comment well now people are laughing people are jumping on and it becomes this dog pile party of well now everybody of not of playing character. the game <laughs> you're not playing the game the story's not progressing it is it is so easy you know whether it be with children or adults one comment leads to seventeen and you know. Now, now we've broken character. Now we got to end this. We got to bring it all back in. Let's get everybody get together. You know, it could be 10, 20 minutes. Where were we? What was going on? Oh, now we got to take even more time to recap. All right, let's, let's get back into this. So the, the next thing is, you know, control the flow of the game. As the, as the GM, you have to work on this. It can be hard. Players can be like herding cats at times. Uh, but what do we mean by controlling the flow of the game? That is, if the combat is over, but there are still monsters over there, just find a way to narratively end it. There's no reason to do di nice, uh, needless dice rolling. After a while, it just becomes obsessive. It's not adding to the story, and the outcome is inevitable. You know, why bother? It becomes a waste of time. So if you've got a boss fight and he's got, you know, seven minions, you've, you've killed five, five of the minions and the boss, the rest is just cleanup. It's inevitable. Uh, unless the, the players roll like crud and the, the, the minions are critting all over the place, you're, you're going to just mop the, the they're going to mop the floor with them. So now rate it. Oh, who's next in combat? All right, you, you get your kill shot. You get your kill shot. Let me know what, you know, you describe what happens. I'm not even going to, no dice rolls involved. Or you, as Dave says, you just narrate it. This is what happens. You mow through them and you make the call and then you, you roll the story. You've just saved, you know, potentially five minutes of, you know, combat time to get back into the crux of the story. And I like doing these, these kind of things because it's important to just, all right, this, this part's not fun anymore of my, my minions are going to get slaughtered. My NPCs are, are worthless against the might of the players. And then, you know, also going back to our first tip with the time savers, this is where the GM would step in for those players that aren't being decisive and aren't taking their turn. 
Well, just bump them initiative. You could bump them in initiative or all out skip them. Depending on how punitive you would like to be, you could be like, oh, you're not ready? Fine, next player, go. You got something? Yet? Nope, next player, go. You know, until you get to the end of the round, you know, the end of the order, if they still don't have anything for you, you know, they just didn't go this round. It's a little pun punitive, but, you know, for the sake of the game and getting more stuff done, I, I think it's acceptable, especially if you explain beforehand, this is what we're doing, have a couple options ready, have your default, like Ted said, you know, there's there's no reason for for it why we can't just keep moving. If it's if it's part of the theme of, of the game, like it's something you've discussed in a session zero, then it's not punitive. It's part of the rules of the game so that everything is, is expedited. You've got the ability to keep that game flowing and and because I, I hate to say it this way because I know there's there's a lot of different schools of thought but you as a GM you're entertaining you know 10 plus players you know for these these large groups if you're gonna sit there and make everybody wait on that one player everybody is being punished because of that one player you're you're skipping that one to help everybody else out and to keep the game the game moving uh, the next next thing is managing the game and by managing the game that's not actually the gm's job right it's like you're, you have one of the many jobs right so you're going to have someone that recaps the session for you you're going to have a chronicler that's taking notes you're going to have someone that's taking care of the initiative tracking maybe someone that's scheduling the games between sessions so you get people that do all these other things tracking the loot so this way is the gm you don't have to worry about it man even with the loot you might even just have them written down on cards and you hand it to the loot tracker and then it's like out of your hands like don't ask me what you got next week because i gave it to you guys if if you don't find it and i've already given it to you you guys have somehow lost it or been swindled out of it you know you could do things like that initiative tracker hey this is how it works i'm going to say roll initiative you guys are going to roll initiative but i'm going to keep going with the narrative while you guys do that guys take an index card hold up your number for the initiative tracker he'll get it she'll get it and then you guys can keep flowing with the game as even as the DM is still like setting things up or or narrating. Now, you know, another one is someone who can look up can look up rules if there's a question or if there's an issue. The DM doesn't need to halt everything. It's like, okay, this is gonna this is gonna stay in in limbo while we figure it out. Meanwhile, everything else is going. We get the final the final rules call if the GM doesn't want to do it on the spot. You know, and boom, all right, that's what it is. Now this has been resolved. Meanwhile, everything has still still been flowing. This is something that you know a veteran and trustworthy player should be able to do. And you can be like, boom, you're you're in charge of rules. If there's an issue, you got all the books right there in front of you. You're allowed to you know look up the way this works in the DMG or Monster Manual or whatever it is that you need to do. And boom, you move you move on. You know, and let that happen. You know, a chronicler or a scheduler. You know, these these things are great for the out of game thing. So it's not going to necessarily speed up time at the table, but it is it is great. Uh, I'm fortunate enough to have in my game one of my players does a a Google Doc recap of what happened in the last session. So everything that's happening, he's he's jotting things down and saying, oh, we met this guy, we met this thing. You know, we happened this happened here. You know, he. As part of that, I think he does manage the the loot as well. So it all it all kind of you know couples together and makes it really nice for my game. So I, I definitely see an ad, an advantage there. Well, I actually disagree a little bit. It can actually expedite things when you need a piece of information, you know, whether it be the GM or another player, and someone's been chronicling. That a lot of times there's access to that information, or that individual because they took the time to do it may even just know it off the top of their head. So it can save a little bit of time there. That, that you're 100 percent sure there. There have been a, a couple of occasions where something has happened in the game. I did not have that that NPC in my head, and you know Kurt, you know, went back into his notebook, went back several pages, like boom, it's this guy, Golden. There you go. Yeah. So there, you know, there are some quick ways you can help speed up your game for a larger party. Hey, even a smaller one. You just want to move faster. Why not? Are there things that we didn't think of or things that you use in your game? We got a place where you can tell us all about it down in the comments below. While you're at it, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. While you're down there, don't forget to, to check out Easy Roller Dice. Go get and that promo code. So until next time, stay, stay nerdy. nerdy.